Welcome back, everybody. And uh, we are uh, very happy to now have a talk by Alex Raga, um, the head tail plasmon model for clumps with Hubble tail laws. Alex, take it away. Sure. So I decided to change the, the title to a more catchy title. Uh, so this is a collaboration with a group from the UNAM and Pedro Rivera, who's a postdoc in Observatoire de Grenoble in France. Okay, so uh, I'm going to tell you about my current obsession. Here, there's a picture uh, for at least the older people who we know, Adam Frank, when he was younger, one would be excused from confusing this guy with Adam Frank, but no, this is a, another more famous Frank that we have there. Okay. So th this obsession is how to produce a high velocity clumps with a tail that has one of these linear velocity or radial velocity, if you want, versus position uh, dependencies. So in planetary nebulae, sometimes in uh, outflows from young stars, you see these compact clumps that move at high velocities and are joined to the regions close to the source by a profile of decreasing radial velocity as you go closer to the source with a linear dependence. We have uh, uh, the three recent papers on this. Basically, these are models in which you start either with a, a, a pulse of uh, material that is ejected, if you want, first with low velocities reaching a peak and then going down to zero, uh, and you produce a working surface, and a tail in which you have like velocity sorted material. Also, it's possible to obtain this by having a clump uh, with a, a cross section of velocity, fast velocity in the center, uh, low velocity in the edge, and velocity sorting leads to the production of a long tail of, with a linear velocity versus position eventually at long times. I'm going to tell you about the latest thing we are trying on this subject of producing clumps with linear velocity versus position trails behind the clumps. So uh, here, basically, we will consider two clumps. The, the two clumps are basically the same clumps, the same velocity, the same density. The only thing, one of them travels in a homogeneous low density medium. The second clump first moves in a high density medium and then emerges into a low density medium. I'm going to show you two simulations. Both of them have a clump that is moving initially at 300 kilometers per second. During the simulation, the clump slows down a little bit, but not a lot. It has an initial density, number density of 10 to the six uh, atoms, ions per cubic centimeter, a 10 to the 16 centimeter radius, and then, uh, the first clump moves in a density of 10 per cubic centimeter. The second clump first moves in a high density medium of 10 to the four uh, atoms per cubic centimeter, and then emerges into the 10 uh, ion per cubic centimeter medium. Everything is photoionized here. So here are the two simulations. On the left, well, actually both of the simulations are done in a reference system that is initially at rest with respect to the clump. So basically the environment streams from left to right at 300 kilometers per second. Here we have on the left, the, uh, these are, this is an axisymmetric simulation. So these are density stratifications. Here is mass density. If you want number density, you have to multiply approximately by 10 to the 24. Uh, so here we have, the clump, the high density clump that starts to form a bow shock. And this bow shock is, uh, this bow shock is formed as time evolved. This is time in years, if you want. Uh, the X uh, extent of the domain is two times 10 to the 18 centimeters. Okay. And uh, this uh, one fourth of this is the, the radial cylindric, the extent in the cylindrical radius direction. And so you form a bow shock and some kind of uh, very low density wake. This has been seen in 
many, many previous uh, simulations, you know, the, not to mention things of, of, of Adam Frank and collaborators. You know? This is the same simulation, but with a two density medium. Here we have the high density medium streaming towards the right, followed by the low density medium. Okay, this is 10 to the four, per cubic centimeter, this is 10 per cubic centimeter. So you see in the 10 to the four medium, a very small Bauschuk is formed. This is because the ramp pressure of the medium is very large. It confines the clump material to a small volume. When the clump starts emerging into the low density medium, it starts growing in size. It becomes more similar to the first simulation in which the clump always was uh, in the low density medium. At long enough times, if you want, they don't look so different, the two bow shocks, no? Uh, however, uh, the central region here, the tail, in this simulation has a much higher density than the one of the clump that always moved in a low density medium. This higher density region here is the material that was in the bow shock here when it was confined by the high density uh, environment. And this material emerges into the low density medium trailing the clump and filling in this kind of tail. And you can imagine, uh, here we have this velocity sorting that produces this uh, more or less linearly increasing velocity as you go away from the high density medium to the clump. I, I will show you this in the following frames. The following frame actually has the predicted H-alpha map, okay? This is for this time here. Basically, uh, we take the simulations, calculate the H-alpha emission coefficient at each grid point, and then if you want to uh, carry out integrals through the cylindrically symmetric uh, structure predicted by the model. And we have this for the uh, clump that always moved in a low density environment. And we've got this for the clump that initially moved in a high density environment. Here we see the emission from the high density environment, which here everything is photoionized, everything emits. Of course, the, the low density medium also emits. Here I have put a cut in the H-alpha map so that we don't see this emission, okay? But everything is emitting here, no? We see a bow shock here, uh, very similar to, to the bow shock emission of the clump that was always there in the low density medium. And this uh, weight here, that this is the material of the initial bow shock in the high density medium that is now emerging into the low density medium. Now in the following frame, uh, I will show you a prediction of a PV diagram, a position velocity diagram. What one would observe with a spectrogram with a long slit here, I have assumed that the slit is quite narrow with respect to the diameter of the, of the clump. Actually, very similar PV diagrams are obtained if you take a, wide, a wider slit. Here, the slit which has been assumed to be narrow. Uh, cutting through the clump here, this would be the clump uh, that moved in the uniform environment here, the clump that emerged from the neutral, in, from the high density environment into the low density environment. So the PV diagram here of the clump in the low density medium shows a bow shock emission, this kind of comma shaped here, this has been commented quite a bit in by Adam Frank and collaborators. Uh, it doesn't look like a Hubble law at all. And some kind of very faint emission from the perturbed environment in the far bow shock wing. The other one of the clump that emerged uh, here, this is the, the, the spatial position that is the boundary. Alex, three of, minutes. Three minutes, okay, Alex. The boundary of the, of the high density region. Uh, here's the bow shock and oh, this way cast this Hubble velocity law. So uh, completely uh, uh, want it or not, if you have a clump that emerges from a high density medium into a low density medium, you produce this wake behind the clump with a, 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 an approximately linear radial velocity versus uh, position. Of course, the radial velocity goes to zero 
not at the initial position of the clump, which was here, but at the position, at the transition in the environment between the uh, high density region and the low density region, okay? Uh, so there are, of course, many questions about this. One has the feeling that this, uh, any other confined flow, for example, the jet head that emerges from a high density medium into a low density medium, probably also results in a similar kind of thing to this, no? Maybe this is not unique for a clump emerging from high density to low density medium. Of course, the other question is, what if we don't have a, an interface between high density and low density, but uh, an environment with a density that decreases with position along the direction of propagation of the clump, what does one obtain then? Uh, uh, we will have to see. Okay, so this is the end of the talk. Any questions? Thank you very much. Questions? I know I have a couple, but I'm gonna let anybody else. Uh, Noam, Noam has a question. Yes, these are, these are very interesting simulations. My only comment is don't use the term Hubble law. Hubble law is isotropic, homogeneous, and has no center. So it's not a good term. Just linear velocity position. Hubble law is making us look. I don't like to use the term Hubble law. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I agree. But this is all over the literature, no? No, no. Uh, we I should dislike stop it, it personally too. No, <laughs> we should stop it now. It's not Habello. Habello. Okay, okay, so okay, okay. Genius. I agree. Okay, let, let's do it. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, Bruce says, Alex, your Hubble law. Oops, your your linear law has a negative slope. Observations show a positive slope. Comments. The only thing is, is this object, uh, I projected it as if it were coming towards us. So, so the object has a negative radial velocity. Here I have assumed a 30 degree angle between the axis and the, uh, and the plane of the sky, but 30 degrees towards us. So it's more negative in the bow shock, if you want, and zero in the point where the linear velocity law starts. No, it's just a, a com coming towards us, basically. Uh, I have a question. I don't see any of this, so let me jump in. Um, Alex, I'm not entirely sure what's happening. So you're, you're building, when you're in the high density environment, your bow shock has much more material loaded onto it, so to speak. And then you break free, uh, and then this material now sort of can roll back. I mean, I'm not, and I don't really understand why the velocity sorting necessarily should happen. Well, you can imagine, you, you produce this high density bow shock inside here, the shape of the bow shock is determined, if you want, by the some kind of approximate ramp pressure between the clump material and the streaming environment. Mm -hmm. Once uh, uh, the bow shock emerges into the low density environment, the material here uh, doesn't have any more the ramp pressure of the incoming environment. So, oh, there it goes freely into- Now it can know, expand. Right. Yeah, it, it expands. It's certainly liberated from. Basically, it's a a, a bow shock emerging from a, a high density environment to a zero density environment. Not right. just the fact right. it's ten to the three contrasts here. So wow, it moves freely. There's no confining pressure from the outside. This is somehow well, you can force this with a very big density contrast, if you want. Right. No. Right. Right. So now it's free to expand. Um, yes. you've, uh, you've, you also asked the question about whether clumps and jets would behave the same way when they break out. But would the, the fact that the clump, that you can backfill inside to the axis on the clump, do you think that might have any difference between a clump and a jet? Yes. Yes, it, it will make a difference. However, however the, the, for the bow shock, a similar situation will be found. Of course, the axis will be filled in by the jet, as you say, you're completely correct. Right. No? Okay. All right, any other questions? Uh, Jesus uh, wants to say that he's suggesting homologous expansion, which is always fun to say. It's very fun to say homologous. So okay. uh, I vote for that, yes. Okay, I should cancel my share screen, no?